Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are going to view the slides for head and neck pathology. Okay, so we have a total of six slides for this session. We are going to start with uh, slide 263. This is labeled as chronic sayala adenitis or chronic sayalo adenitis. And this is called the Sjogren syndrome. So, uh, what would be very important to look at in this particular slide would be the presence of chronic inflammation. And notice that we would see the presence of ducts and uh, ductules and we have a lot of inflammatory cells. So, this is an inflammation of the salivary gland. In Sjogren syndrome, it is an autoimmune disorder that is associated with two manifestations seen in the patient. One is they would complain of dryness of the mouth and dryness of the eyes. So the dryness of the eyes would be called keratoconjunctivitis sica, while the dryness of the mouth would be called serostomia. Um, so it's an autoimmune disorder. It means that we would be able to detect antibodies. Uh, the, the autoantibodies that is most commonly used for Sjogren syndrome would be the SSA, SSB because these antibodies can be detected in up to 90% of patients with Sjogren syndrome. The other antibodies that we can use would be the rheumatoid factor which is seen in 75% of cases and we also have the ANA, the anti-nuclear antibody which is seen in 50 to 80% of cases. The possible autoantigen in this case, the Sjogren syndrome, would be the presence of viral antigens okay, as well as the alpha fodrin, although these antigens are not yet established. Okay? They are not yet identified as a culprit. Okay? So again, what you would see here would be the salivary gland. Okay? You have the presence of the cyanide. Okay? Some of them are dilated, it means that they are atrophied. You have a lot of inflammatory cells surrounding the, uh, the, the, the assignar structures. Uh, areas of fibrosis are seen surrounding the ducts. And that's the reason why we can have a tumor-like condition. Okay? This one, you have the uh, increased amount of fibrocollagenous trauma. There's fibrosis surrounding the, the ducts and then you have a lot of inflammatory cells. So next would be warding tumor. So warding tumor is uh, this is the second most common uh, tumor found in the salivary gland. It is benign. It is almost exclusively found in the parotid although we can see it in the, uh, although uh, it may be seen, that's why it's, it is said almost, okay, but it is rarely seen in the other glands. Uh, it is associated with smokers and males and seen in the 50 to 70 year old bracket. So what do we see histologically? Okay, we're going to look at the high power at uh, the, the scanning view, you can see a lot of cystic spaces here, there, and then these cystic spaces would be lined by a unique epithelium wherein you would see double layer, okay? The lower portion would be cuboidal, the upper portion would be columnar, and take note of their granular cytoplasm. So these cells are oncocytes. O-N-C-O-C-Y-E-S. And the stroma that would be present would be composed of lymphocytes. Okay? So double layer, cystic spaces, and a lot of lymphocytes. Next we have slide 213. This is labeled as polymorphic adenoma. So, in the clinical practice, this is the most common type of tumor that is seen uh, 
in the salivary gland and uh, this is uh, seen in 60% of cases in the parotid uh, it is lesser in, in number in the submandibular and quite rare in the sublingual they are also termed as benign mixed tumor its malignant counterpart would be called carcinoma X pleomorphic adenoma okay so why is it called pleomorphic because we have the presence of ducts and ducts uh, uh, my epithelial and epithelial cells forming this uh, this tubules and they are surrounded by uh, by degrees of stroma it can be fibrocollagenous here it can be fibromyxoid okay. and uh, pleomorphic adenoma is associated with PLAG1 or PLAG1 overexpression okay. uh, this is a benign tumor pleomorphic adenoma however uh, it requires parotidectomy to decrease the incidence of of uh, recurrence a simple enucleation would be prone to recurrence there's 25 percent chance of recurrence so again this would be the morphic adenoma okay so we're in yeah, the presence of those tubular uh, structures they are lined by uh, cuboidal cells here and mixed with some myepithelial cells so this would be pre-morphic adenoma or benign mixed tumor. So next we have slide 27. So this is squamous cell carcinoma of the palate. Okay, the squamous cell carcinoma would be the same uh, whether you go to the lung, to the oral cavity, to the skin, they have the same features. And uh, squamous cell carcinoma would account for 95% of all head and neck cancers and it is associated with tobacco smoking, with alcohol, in, uh, drinking, uh, betel quid, and paan chewing. Okay, so it's associated with those. And 70% of squamous cell carcinoma of the orifice would be associated with HTV16. And when we talk about HPV16, if you remember my lecture on, on knee ablation, um, it's that the presence of E6 and E7 genes would cause inactivation of uh, tumor suppressor genes like P16, like P53, and RB. Uh, for those associated with smoking or other conditions than HPV, there would be inactivation of the of the P53, the P63, and the natural. Okay, keratin pearl formation is observed. This is an example of the keratin pearl formation. Okay. Uh, you have the presence of nests. Okay, the nest would mean that there are clusters, organoid clusters, of the cells. Uh, they would exhibit. Uh, the presence of pleomorphism, where you have small, very large, okay, looking cells, you have irregular nuclear features or nuclear membrane, you have prominence of the nucleoli, okay, and uh, the other feature of, of squamous cell carcinoma, aside from having the presence of cytokeratin or keratin within cytoplasm, would be the presence of the uh, intercellular junctions or the desmosomes like this one so these are desmosomes very important uh, when we are looking at well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma so keratinization individual cell presence of uh, cell junctions we have uh, presence of mitosis mitosis and another mitosis and then um, we look at where is it the presence of the keratin pearl okay 
So this is a keratin pearl wherein you have entrapped squamous cells surrounded by dense keratin. So this is squamous cell carcinoma. Next we have uh, slide 214 which is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. So, mucoepidermoid carcinoma is the most common uh, form of malignancy uh, in the salivary gland. Uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma would be associated with the fusion gene MECT1, MAML2, MAML2. And it would be composed of nests okay, of atypical cells here. Okay. Similar to squamous cell carcinoma, when, where in you have nest. And one differentiating feature between them would be the presence of mucosecreting cells uh, admixed with squamous looking cells. Okay. So you can see this particular cell would have abundant mucin within its cytoplasm. Here's another one, here's another one. Here's another one, here's another one. But they are accompanied by, by squamous looking cells. Okay? So, uh, there are three grades for mucoepidermoid. It can be, um, it can be low grade. When you say low grade, low grade, a lot of the areas would be composed of mucosecreting cells. And then we have a lot of cystic areas and we have minimal amount of squamous cells. Uh, if it's intermediate, it's a combination. This particular tissue is high grade because you have more of the uh, you have more of the squamous cells and less of the mucosecreting cells. Okay, again, mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Um, this is MECT1 Magel. Our last slide is slide 222. Uh, so this is um, slide 222 adenoid cystic carcinoma. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is the second most common malignant tumor of the salivary gland. It is associated with the formation of nests, but take note that the nests here will be uh, punctuated by spaces okay, that would contain uh, some sort of homogeneous pink amorphous material. The cells here would be small round cells and uh, they are the, the the cystic spaces, if we are going to test it with PAS, they would be positive. Okay? So, uh, these are the slides that we have for this session. Kindly review them as uh, we are.